I was thinking about what a friend had said I was hoping it was a lie I love how his horrible handwriting is almost as bad as mine. Never seen someone with very similar and terrible handwriting like mine. My handwriting's not that bad, is it? And you don't gotta be so hard on yourself, huh? Music too loud, can't hear you. Please try again. Well, you got me there. Uh, lots of people told me that the music was too loud at the beginning of the video, and you're totally right. This was a long time ago, this was five years ago, when I first started making these videos, and I didn't know what I was doing. I could not watch this because of the background music. You are a moron. That's harsh. I would prefer to watch a video on this subject without the music. Stopped watching after 30 seconds. Boo. Well, the joke's on you, buddy. The music only lasted 31 seconds. You watched the worst part and then turned it off. I would suggest you change your background music to something more suitable. This is interesting to me. A few people said that my choice of the music was not appropriate for this video. I guess, uh, you know, you can't have snappy music for a math video. I don't know. There are royalty-free music websites. Thanks, buddy. Uh, the one I'm using is royalty-free. It's one of the stock songs from iMovie. Have you wondered why our math consists of numbers done in tens? It's because humans have ten digits on both hands. So my question is, how do we work with math based on multiples of ten and expect math to be the universal language when other potential alien species could have less or more digits than humans? Not really about Napier's bones, but I appreciate the abstract question. Uh, it's true that we use base 10 because of our anatomy, and this is like a cultural reason, which really has nothing to do with the mathematics, but almost nothing in real mathematics is dependent on the base 10 system. You know, lots of math has nothing to do with numbers at all, but even the stuff that does have to do with numbers, it's all, all the theorems that are proven, whatever, is almost always done independent of the base. So the base 10 is really just a uh, curiosity. The way he says the bones is one of a kind. This is the most popular comment. 1.7 thousand likes on this uh, on this video. I don't know. I feel like I say it in a pretty normal way. Like I know everybody has an accent and everybody thinks they speak normal, even people who don't. But um, you know, I have like the ordinary white American accent. Isn't that normal? Like if you watch American people on TV or whatever, they talk like me, don't they? I don't know. I'm not saying it's right, but it, don't you expect people to sound like me? I don't know. Wonder what it sounds like when he orders a pizza. I guess like how I sound right now, only talking about pizza. Small things like this are what medieval fantasy films are missing. I like this idea. I sometimes see old mechanical math machines in a movie, and I'm always like DiCaprio when I see him, although I've never seen Napier's Bones in a real Hollywood film. Several people replied to this one saying that the 1600s is not medieval in any uh, historical sense. And anyway, the whole idea of medieval slash fantasy is really sort of a made up um, cultural idea, which has uh, very little historical accuracy and is mostly based on sort of a white Eurocentric view of world history. But anyway, I would like to see the Napier's Bones used in a film sometime. Sometimes I thought about making a, a little sort of micro video series about spottings of old mechanical instruments in, um, in Hollywood films and just sort of say what they are, whether they were being used appropriately. Does that sound interesting? I don't know. Leave a comment. No triangles are to be seen. What? I never thought there was different ways to multiply. Well, yes, there are, Dr. Kill a Kill Gaming. Uh, there's lots of ways to do it. The way that we typically learn these days is called long multiplication, but there's another way called lattice multiplication, and that's actually what the Napier's bones are based on. Oh, so it's like lattice math. Yeah, I just said that. Who the biscuit taught him to do that weird biscuit times tables answer of 25 times 43? Like, that's not how you do double digit times tables. Where in the world did he go to school? Okay, so some people got really mad about how I multiplied 25 times 43. The way I was taught in school is like this. And in the video, I wrote it like this. Now, to me, these are the same. Like, they're not exactly the same. Like, if I was trying to teach a little kid, I get that these might look like two different methods. But part of my mathematical training is knowing how to be mentally flexible enough to realize when two different seeming ideas are actually the same. 
If you think math is just about memorizing and executing a bunch of steps, then I guess these two things are kind of different. Math with more steps. And I guess that kind of person is going to say the first way is like the right way and the second way is kind of the wrong way. I cannot for the life of me understand why they would change something so basic as math. This new way, they added steps to get the answer. They took two lines to add to get the answer and made it four lines to add to get the answer. And somehow that is now the correct way? No, M. It is not now the correct way. This whole thinking is kind of another symptom of like people who learn math by memorization. Like some people think when you learn how to do a math problem, you just got to like memorize a bunch of steps. Every time you write something down, you have to memorize how to do it. And so if there's more stuff to write down, then there must be more stuff you got to memorize. So that must be harder. But here's the secret. Memorizing stuff is harder. Don't memorize stuff. Just learn it. So this is the person who made math class so complicated. This ain't math class, man. And I didn't make this stuff up. Every time I watch a video like this, it makes me realize how advanced Chinese math is taught in school. I'm so glad I didn't have to go through this. What? This is Scottish math. It's not Chinese. And it's not advanced either. This thing, I'm so glad I didn't have to go through this. This is interesting. I see this kind of attitude from a lot of people that I meet just in real life. They hear I'm a mathematician. They only know of mathematics in the context of somebody making them do some stuff. And so... Whenever they see any math, the only thought they can think of is, oh, I'm glad nobody's making me do this stuff. My response would be, come on, man, like you're you're a grown up now. Nobody's making you do anything. Just enjoy life. Gotta say, math is boring, but the history of math is interesting. You're close, cheese. This is cool biscuit. They need to throw this stuff around in math class. I think it would stimulate the love of math and thinking in general in a lot more people. I agree. And they got a reply. This is one of the concepts taught in core that parents went bat biscuit crazy over. You're exactly right, Amy. I don't know if Napier's Bones is actually part of the common core curriculum, but there's this new math curriculum for kids in the United States public schools that's come about in the past decade or so. And let me tell you, it is very slightly different. And those moms hate it. Uh, this is another symptom of learning by memorizing. Uh, if you learned how to do math by memorizing a bunch of stuff, you probably don't know it very well and you probably hate it. And when somebody shows you something that's very slightly different, you are totally unable to understand it. It's on you, man. You make math so complicated. Now I understand why the U.S. sucks at math and science. In high school and college, I was a math tutor. My third college was for my mathematical degree to teach at universities. I would never teach anyone the way you are showing people to do math. This is pretty extreme and a little disappointing if this really is someone who's a math educator. First of all, I'm not trying to teach or show anyone how to do math. This is a video about Napier's bones, which nobody is going to use in their real life. That's not the point of the video. I would say my videos are all about sort of showing you a piece of mathematical beauty that is expressed in some kind of outdated stuff that we don't use anymore. Um, if all you care about math is like memorizing some procedure to give you the right answer, I guess these videos are not for you. Although I would say also math is not for you. This reminds me of a political speech that I saw about a month ago. You tell them, Ron! You know, math is about getting the right answer. And we want kids to learn to think so they get the right answer. It's not about how you feel about the problem or to introduce some of these other things. It's there's a right answer and there's a wrong answer. And we want all our students getting the right answers. And this so is a fundamental misunderstanding of how and why we do mathematics. Teaching kids to memorize specific techniques and then apply them totally free of historical or cultural context produces illiterate adults who hate math but simultaneously view themselves as experts in how math should be taught. That number from 215, just divide 43 by 4 in your head and shift the decimal point 2 to the right. 4 into 40 equals 10. 4 into 3 equals 3 fourths, which is 0.75. To 10.75, shift the decimal 1075. Of course, if he wanted to divide 25 into 43, just do it the other way. Okay, this is like the opposite extreme of telling me that I'm doing it in a complicated way. Um, several people wrote comments about their own special way that they would have done this multiplication, which usually uh, boiled down to some obscure tricky tricks because one of the numbers was 25 and you could do some tricks with 25. Uh, I'm not into a bunch of tricky tricks, but hey, if you're into it, go for it. 
So how you learn to multiply is, uh, all right, this person is getting serious with the binomial expansion and then telling me about offset digits. This is what truth looks like. Hey, you do you, man. Makes no difference to the monkey. Yo, my last name is Napier. Pretty sure those are paint sticks. Yes, they are paint sticks. I said so in the video. Uh, the video title was um, Calculator Sticks from the 1600s. But I mean, the idea is from the 1600s. I, I'm not trying to say my sticks. Those particular sticks are actually sticks from the 1600s. No, that's not what I meant. Not trying to be mean whatsoever, but I just thought those were a bunch of Home Depot painting sticks with numbers scribbled on them. No, that's not mean whatsoever. Maybe even a Walmart or a Lowe's or something. It's Home Depot. I, I said it in the video. It's home, They're from Home Depot. No, those are paint sticks with marker. Yes, those are paint sticks with marker. It's in no way an improvement on an abacus. Abacus requires skill. Once acquired, it's far, far superior. If you talking about easy, then sure, this anyone can do. But definitely a mathematician won't think it's superior. Oh, are they saying I'm not a real mathematician? I don't know. Obviously, an abacus trains your mind to think about numbers in a better way. And so from that point of view, an abacus is a much better thing to train on and learn if you want to be, you know, computing numbers in your head for the rest of your life. But uh, for someone with very little training, that's what the bones are meant to be used for. I biscuit hate math. I would have loved these bones as a more visual person. I think these should still be used. I don't mean to argue with you, but if you love Napier's bones the way that I described, I don't think that you hate math. I think you might actually love math. You just hate the way that it was presented to you. Uh, you know, I assume you're not a kid anymore. You don't have to do it anymore. Maybe check it out. You might like it. Plus, it's called Bones. I mean, it's cool, and you can make immature jokes, or boners, as they would have called it back then. Yes, surely, back then. As they would have called it back then. Na ruski shotak... All right, we got a Russian We got a Russian one here. Uh, what they're saying is that I, when I was demonstrating with my Russian abacus, I did it backwards. I moved the beads in the wrong direction. That's right. I'm, I'm kind of self-taught on the Russian abacus, and I looked it up later, and I realized I did it backwards. Sorry about that, Russians. Napier invented logarithms and then some middle finger emojis. I don't, I'm not sure how to interpret the middle finger emojis. Is that just, you don't like logarithms, so you are giving the finger to Napier? All right. Um, maybe, maybe you don't like that I said, are the fingers for me because I said that Napier invented logarithms? Actually, some other people commented that Napier was not the inventor of the logarithms, but it was done earlier by the Arabs. You know, I'm uh, I'm sympathetic to the idea that the Arabs did everything earlier. In and in in mathematics, uh, you know, of the uh, Middle Ages, certainly, uh, it's a good bet to bet that the Arabs did it before the Europeans. But I looked into this, and uh, there doesn't seem to be very good evidence for that. So I'm happy to give it to the Arabs. Not this time, though. These are cruel. A Napier is killed to make these. Aha! I like that. That's a good one.